Hello again. Those writing for the British newspaper The Guardian are not renowned either for the strength of their intellects nor the clarity of their prose. But a piece yesterday about asylum seekers in Ireland really was something quite special, even for The Guardian. Viewers might be aware that Ireland is now welcoming all the world and his dog and inviting anybody in the world who feels like it to fetch up in their country and make themselves at home. I am, you understand, summarising the situation a little here. An awful lot of Irish people regard this as a tragedy and they see their highly distinctive and precious culture slipping away and being replaced by the modern, all-purpose, global identity which has taken root in this country and is so beloved of progressive and liberal folk on both sides of the Irish Sea. I give a link in the description to this video to the piece from The Guardian and I thoroughly recommend it to readers who might wish for a bit of a laugh. Let me read one or two sentences to give a flavour of the thing. It begins, After years of bucking the European trend, an organised anti-refugee backlash has finally hit Ireland. Recent protests involve threats to burn down a hotel housing refugees and in a separate incident there was a vigilante attack on a homeless migrant camp. These ugly scenes followed months of protests led by the far right and simmering community tensions over the provision of local accommodation to refugees. But where has this come from? Now, I'm no expert on Irish politics and I haven't been there for over 50 years, but I think this is happening because a lot of ordinary people are sick of having refugees and asylum seekers dumped in their neighbourhoods and they're also getting a little ticked off at the behaviour of some of the supposed asylum seekers. I may of course be wrong about this, but we learn from the article that 56% of Irish people, according to a new poll, think that Ireland has accepted too many refugees lately. The very fact that over half the population feels that way surely tells us that this is not a case of a small number of extreme right-wingers whipping up a fuss about the business. Then we have this. Anti-refugee protests and the febrile discourses that swirl around are potentially signalling the birth of a new political energy that could impose itself on future elections in Ireland. I think by that they, they actually mean that uh, it's going to be a vote loser. But uh, On closer inspection, they also demonstrate the importation of anti-refugee arguments from across the Irish Sea. Of course, the Irish have to import their ideas about refugees from this country, don't they? They couldn't perhaps have observed what is going on in their own country and decided freely that they didn't like the look of it and wanted to put a stop to the situation? Of course not. That's why there is mentioned later in the article of Tommy Robinson and Mark Collett to show that the anti-asylum seeker sentiment is caused by English Nazis rather than Irish folk with legitimate grievances. Mind, the Irish seem to have their own right-wing agitators who are getting people all stirred up because the article goes on to say that Irish far-right activists are disseminating false information about criminal activities. Proliferating through social media on any given day are rumours of sexual assault or the harassment of women by migrants. Gosh, I wonder why that might be. Why are those stories circulating on social media? Disseminating false information, eh? I suppose that means that it isn't true that two gay men were mutilated and beheaded in Sligo last year and a man called Yusuf Palani charged with the murders. I won't run through a list of assaults and various unsavoury things which have happened in Ireland and been connected with people whose heritage lies in Africa, Eastern Europe and the Middle East, but perhaps just one case reported this month will illustrate the point because it reveals the very, very different values held by some newcomers to the Emerald Isle. I give a link to this case in the description to this video. 
A 32-year-old Romanian gypsy called Georg Rafaela was sitting on a bench with his wife. A three-year-old boy came near them and Rafaela reached out and grasped the boy's penis, pulling it out of his trousers. Then he began fondling the boy's genitals, with his wife sitting next to him and watching and raising no objection. When he was arrested, he said to the police officers, in the Roma community, this is something playful. Maybe here it is not. Viewers will probably be glad to know that he's been sent to prison and will be deported on the, by the time he's finished serving his sentence. I think personally that Irish people have very good grounds for wanting to see a halt to immigration before their own culture and traditions are altogether lost. But I don't hold out much hope for them. I find it truly extraordinary that people writing for The Guardian genuinely don't see what the problem is and think that anybody who objects to what is going on must be a stooge of right-wing English extremists.